Good afternoon, everyone. So uh, I'm going to talk about uh, a project that we've uh, conducted together with uh, the World Bank. Um, I'm going to... Ah. And so um, the, the project is really about um, leveraging any kind of uh, freely accessible data, um, geospatial information coming from uh, GIS databases, but also uh, low-resolution satellite imagery to make uh, assessments of uh, road network infrastructure at scale. And by that, it means um, evaluating the condition of roads in developing countries to better plan uh, investment programs and make um, road networks more uh, resilient to uh, climate change. Um, so um, first, an introduction for uh, people who do not necessarily know who uh, the World Bank is. It's actually the largest uh, lender uh, in the world. Um, they loan about $70 billion a year for any kind of uh, education, health, uh, food, or infrastructure programs. And uh, infrastructure actually represents 25% uh, of the money that the World Bank is investing every year. Um, and the, the World Bank mainly invests in uh, developing countries. And so, the context of the work we've been doing at the World Bank, and um, by the way, we are uh, Altea, we're a software company. We specialize in um, uh, leveraging any form of data source, uh, mostly coming from visual sensors, to make uh, predictions and work on analysis uh, at scale. And so the context was uh, to help uh, World Bank um, uh, understand how much and uh, how to prioritize their um, uh, lending programs tied to uh, road uh, improvements in developing countries. And the main uh, issue that was faced by the organization, it, it's something that's really simple, the cost of getting access to data in order to make those assessments uh, can be really high. Uh, if you talk about high-resolution satellite images, it could be uh, more than $1.5 to $2 million uh, just for the data collection process. And so uh, we've worked together uh, trying to think of a method uh, that would actually make um, the right uh, uh, amount, uh, that will give actually the right amount of information while uh, minimizing uh, the data cost. And so uh, the, 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 the state of the art for um, a geospatial data analysis at scale uh, if you talk about infrastructure projects, but also, I guess, any type uh, uh, of um, uh, business uh, uh, topic, you have um, uh, available open source data that's coming from many different uh, databases. Uh, OpenStreetMap uh, is one of them. And um, uh, that kind of open source data gives you um, uh, access to, um, I would say, uh, a first scope of information. Um, in our case, it was um, um, the, the mapping of the road network for uh, the developing countries that we uh, work on. Then you have also uh, low-resolution uh, satellite images that uh, are available through different kind of databases. Uh, uh, open data by um, uh, AWS uh, is one of them. Or you can also get them directly from the Copernicus uh, portal. And um, um, the resolution of uh, that type of imagery is about uh, 10 meters per pixel, which, um, uh, uh, when it's combined uh, to open source data, can give you uh, great uh, information on uh, the type of the road, if it's paved or unpaved, and the general condition of it, especially if you do not only use uh, optical uh, data, but also uh, SAR information coming from radar uh, um, uh, satellites. And then on the right side uh, of the screen, what's more expensive is high-resolution imagery that will give you more granular information. And usually, uh, you would leverage uh, high-resolution images to make like a real um, um, 
microscopic assessment on a portion of the network. So this was kind of like the, the framework of our analysis. And what we've decided to do was uh, to uh, build an artificial intelligence model to uh, improve artificially uh, the granularity of the low-resolution uh, satellite image by uh, multiplying the different data sources that we had access to. So you, you can see it a little bit as of uh, aggregating so much information together that at the end, the result is a bit bigger than the sum of all the elements that you put into play. And so to do so, we uh, leveraged, as I said, uh, optical data from Sentinel-2, uh, SAR data from uh, uh, the same program, and uh, about sort of a dozen uh, open source databases, um, GIS, like uh, OpenStreetMap, but also uh, initiatives like uh, Mapillary, which is a way to get access to uh, ground-based images uh, in developing countries. Um, if I take a little bit more, um, um, if I talk a little bit more about the approach and get into like the, the, the technical workflow that we've enabled, um, it was kind of like three steps. The first step was uh, to build a, a digital representation of uh, an entire road network, so at the country level. In uh, our case, we did it for the countries of uh, Peru and Mexico. So linking our AI uh, model to all of the accessible databases that are uh, available in the cloud and work on some um, uh, aggregation algorithm to build a network model that would be uh, the best uh, representation of uh, that uh, road network. And then what we've done is enrich uh, that representation, that digital twin um, of our road model network by uh, getting uh, from uh, the cloud all the optical and SAR information that we could in order to uh, build uh, a pavement index and a condition index. So basically, the pavement index would give you uh, information uh, on if the road is paved or unpaved. And uh, the quality index would be more like how uh, uh, practical is the road. Is it like in a very good uh, uh, state or is it like uh, completely uh, uh, um, uh, broke, you know? And that information is crucial because uh, it helps uh, uh, governments uh, and in that case the World Bank lending uh, the money uh, understand how to develop a specific area. Uh, you can understand that if um, uh, you want to develop um, uh, a commercial um, uh, uh, relationship between two cities in Peru, you have to make sure that the, the highway uh, that links uh, that those two cities is actually uh, in great shape and allows uh, uh, the commercial traffic to, to be handled. So uh, that was the, the second step. So using that uh, digital twin and reach it with uh, aerial images coming from uh, freely accessible uh, satellite data. And the third step um, was to um, do some ground truthing. So using uh, available data that is very granular um, and available at a country level to understand uh, how good uh, uh, our model was and basically comparing the prediction to information that was available on the ground. And that indicator uh, was actually a, a KPI for the project and uh, enabled us to uh, uh, compare ourselves to uh, other types of uh, uh, indicators, macroeconomic indicators that are used um, by the financial institutions. Um, I'm going to pass on the, the, the um, uh, technical details, but uh, w what's interesting is um, uh, to look a little bit at the results that we've um, obtained. So um, with uh, that um, um, multi-layered uh, AI model, combining information and then enriching it with uh, uh, heterogeneous data, we built a road network that was 60% um, uh, uh, richer than OpenStreetMap, 
uh, with uh, information on the pavement and the condition of the road that was 80% um, accurate uh, based on the ground truthing that we've made. And so um, just to give you a perspective on what it means uh, for a country like uh, Mexico or Peru, uh, usually the Department of Transportation only uh, gets information on like 20% of their network. And so we offer them a method at scale uh, that was giving them very granular information on 100% uh, of the roads that uh, they have uh, um, in, in, in their country a and basically like opening their eyes on uh, most of the investment uh, initiatives that they have to do to connect uh, to the most uh, rural populations. And um, I'm going to close on the um, um, benefits and next steps we see for that type of large-scale initiative, mostly relying on uh, uh, freely accessible data. So um, if I take Peru, again, uh, we mapped uh, more than 500,000 kilometers of roads, mostly in rural areas where usually you don't really get any information. And uh, this is highly critical, again, to connect um, uh, to those rural population, understand, you know, if um, you uh, can plan like to put a hospital, schools, or like any infrastructure that would actually make uh, the life of these communities better. And that approach um, uh, is actually like six times less expensive than uh, the traditional methods that are used and actually takes only a month uh, to be deployed at a country level, while if you have to uh, uh, do that by uh, ground means, uh, driving a vehicle and, and take notes on every road of the network, uh, it would take more than uh, 20 years. And what you can see on the left is kind of like an overview of the road quality that we have uh, computed uh, for the country of Peru. And um, what's interesting about the type of approach for the digital city, but also digital um, uh, infrastructure uh, uh, initiative is once uh, you have built a digital twin of your network, then you can start analyzing it even further by deploying models that simulate, uh, in that case that you see on the right, um, the pressure of the network to climate events. And this is something we've actually done in uh, Tunisia. Uh, we've modeled with the same method a digital twin of the uh, primary and secondary um, uh, road network and then uh, uh, built uh, a model to simulate the impact of climate change uh, at the country level and understand you know, which uh, uh, sections of the network uh, would be more or less uh, resilient to those uh, new type of events and as such, help the government plan for uh, renovation programs that would encompass, you know, that notion of climate change uh, in their decision process.